P-P-P. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Let's go! Well, uh, welcome to the official 8th anniversary of this podcast. Uh, wow. Today... Um, back in, uh, this is wild. I'm looking at it. It came up on my Facebook, May 30th, 2013, our first episode in the Rogers radio backup studio on the fifth floor back when that even existed as a radio floor, several years before Steve would work at Rogers, several years before Jesse would work at Rogers, uh, come in as an intern or whatever. It is officially eight years today. And I wish... I wish it were better news, but uh, we got a game seven tomorrow, gentlemen. And you know this show is this this show is going to be short, and then yep. the next one will be on Wednesday. Minutes. Uh, yeah, forty five minutes or less, Roughly. Uh, whatever it takes to get the pain over with. Um, <laughs> I I you know what it was? You know it's funny. Last night I'm like, I I wanted the Leafs to win just so I didn't have to check Twitter in the morning. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Oh. Like I, just wanted, I just wanted to have a nice weekend. I think Mike Stevens sure. tweeted. He's like, I got a friend of mine, and I looked at his Insta stories, and he was just having a drink on his on his deck, on his balcony, in you know downtown Toronto. He's like, it's a good re- reminder that people choose not to do this to themselves. I feel like the perfect life is not caring about sports, for Thanks sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm gonna. I'm going to like, I'm going to speak to my father-in-law. We can't tell Leo about soccer. Mm -hmm. Um, And like, I'm going to lock this room up like the, the West wing and beauty and the beast. Mm -hmm. I told you not to go in there. Like it's, I just, I need to protect my son. Mm -hmm. He can't know about sports. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I feel bad for people who don't care about sports. The highs are the highs and the lows are the lows for a reason. The, The what? The highs. The highs. What are those? They <laughs> Can you please describe the highs they, to me? In this, yeah. in this city, we have reached the highs before. We have the Raptors. We have Batista's bat flip. One day, whether it be tomorrow or the end of this season, or it be thirty seasons from now, the Leafs will have a high eventually. <laughs> The law of average. I don't, I don't know if out. I believe that. It could it, be this season. I don't know if I could, but like, listen, listen, I, <laughs> I just don't know if that's even possible. Like, like you can't, you can't, Jesse, tell me with a rational brain that that's possible given what you've what? seen. What? A, a team wins a game? A rational brain. Does it look at, okay, I'm going to read something to you. This is a Dom decision uh, tweet. Mm-hmm. And this, there's no fancy stats here, by the way. If you told me before the series, one, Campbell would have a 937 and higher save percentage than, and sorry, and a higher save percentage than Price. Two, the Leafs would outshoot the Canadians 205 to 175. Three, the Leafs would outscore the Canadians 17 to 11. And four, that the series would go to seven games. I would say, yes, that all makes sense. This team is cursed. And, like, and that's let, where we're at. And let me ask you, because, you know, the, on the anniversary of our, the birth of our podcast, that was right when we were sort of getting into analytics and that's when everyone was fighting with each other on Twitter over analytics and all that. Do any of you care? Do any of you care how we got here or do you just care that we're here? I I just care that we're here. I care that we're here. I don't give a, I don't give a shit how we got here. I don't. We're here. Yeah. The numbers don't really mean anything at this point. The Montreal Canadians became the first team in NHL history to cough up multi-goal leads in elimination games and win the both of them and that's the cool Leafs stat. it is a cool stat you know it's even cooler Except the Leafs are on the other end of it again games. yeah sorry you're right you're right they're on the I just and like game five and game six you know you talk about the killer instinct and you talk about you bums just go out there and do it I saw someone tweet something along the lines of you sad sack piece of garbage. I hate you. Just win. And game seven isn't even that because without Jake Muzzin, I don't think you can tell them to just go out and win it because I'm not entirely convinced they're the better team. And they've gotten worse as the series has gone on. That's probably they a have. bad sign, eh? Yeah, that's or not. maybe Montreal's has gotten better. That's also yeah. we are also afraid to give credit to the team that beats we should give them the other team, I'm not you know? No, it gives them the credit they deserve. You know, the Canadians have played very well. No. 
They're, yeah, I mean, I'll give them credit, but played very well. They coughed up a three nothing and two nothing lead. Uh huh. But then, who won those games? Montreal. Yeah. So give them credit for winning those games because it's not like the Leafs blew it; the other team won as well. The most disrespectful shit I've seen is if the Leafs win Game Seven, they'll beat the Jets. But if Montreal wins Game Seven, the Jets will beat the Habs. <laughs> Uh, listen, I just want to know. I just want to congratulate Winnipeg for reaching the pinnacle of Canadian hockey, going to the third round <laughs> and ultimately losing. Probably, probably yeah. if we're following Canadian rules. Mm-hmm. But oh, when they get there to the promised land, oh my God. It seems like no one, too, is arguing about whether or not this is the worst of the losses. Like, it's just kind of confirmed that if they lose tomorrow, it's going to be the worst collapse out of all the last collapse in the last eight years. Because, James Myrtle. Yeah, he wrote that article, and it was great. He had one piece in there. If the Leafs lose uh, Monday, they'll be the 27th team across North American pro sports. So that's MLB, NHL, and NBA, the three sports that have the seven game series. They'll only be the 27th team to blow a three, one lead with home uh, field advantage. So it's a historic loss. If they lose, I also want to throw this. Out. It has to be historic. It can yeah. never not be normal. <laughs> they can't even, yo, it would have been less historic if they fucking got swept. Yeah. Like that's <laughs> if, if, if they didn't win a game in this series, it would be less historic than what We're you're haunted. talking about. It would have been haunted. easier to take too. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you're like, oh, the team's just not good enough. Because yeah, they simply they are good enough. Right. They just won't perform. And you know what's great is that Jason Spezza alone has three times as many goals as Marner and Matthews combined. I really am. I really am going to strangle those two. I, I, just, I yo, like, I, just, I don't know what. What do you say? Well, and like, and so Marner, uh, throughout the streams, I've been defending him because I'm like, you know what? It's for. I think it's Matthews having a hard time getting open. Mm-hmm. Maybe Marner should shoot it a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But that line is outscoring the Habs, which is the whole name of the game. They're outscoring them 3 nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the penalty kill has been so good. He's been a big part of that. Mm-hmm. Um, he's been so good defensively. That line has been so good defensively. And then in the third period, when he took that penalty and the Leafs got scored on, on the power play, I'm like, so now what do you give me? Right. Besides nothing. Yeah. And... and um, I'm I'm not gonna bring up the contract unless they lose game seven. But the 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 money means you do not feel bad for these people. Like you feel bad for them on a human level. You don't want anyone to go through this. They're all still, you know, mortals. And you young. know, you, see, yeah, you saw young them. kids. Right. Yeah, and young. You see Matthews that you know slamming the boards when the goal goes in. He wasn't even on the ice. Saw Mitch Marner in the box shitting a brick. Um, oh my god, I gotta, I gotta find that Marner stat. There was something about he's taken six minor penalties in the playoffs ever, and five of them are puck over the glass. Uh, so he's just simply not comfortable in the playoffs because yeah. uh, that's a nervous penalty. I, if there's ever a penalty that denotes I am nervous, it's that. And the way that that, like he's playing on his heels, man. There's no, there's no other way to describe it. Here it is from Nick D'Souza. Mitch Marner has 12 career penalty minutes in the playoffs, six minor penalties. Here they are. 2018, game two, puck over glass. 2018, game six, puck over glass. 2019, game five, puck over glass. 2020, tripping. 2021, game one, puck over the glass. Uh, 2021, game six, puck over the glass. What's their record in those games? Off the top of my head, uh, they lost game two 2018, pretty sure. Um, did they? Yep, they lost that game. Uh, game six, I believe they won. Game five 2019 against the Bruins, they won. 2020 game four, they nearly lost 3 nothing. They ended up coming back, and yes, he was a big part of it. Game one this year, they lost. Game six this year, they lost. I um it's not great. Yeah. I, the uh, uh the Matthews Marner tandem, they had 61 they were responsible for 61 goals during the regular season. That's out of the team's 186 goals. 
So you're up like what percentage of this? You know, like 40% of the team's goals. So if you're taking away 40% of a team's goals just in the playoffs, just poof gone. Now you get one out of six games. Like that's not good enough. This is their like, worst slump ex- of the season. How do you expect now. to win? It's their worst slump of the season and it's now. Right. Yeah. And it's now every, for the last two years, it's been like about the last two postseasons. Well, or, or they've looked okay. Here's the thing. They give you hope. And then yeah. for whatever reason, it's like, you guys did it. We watched you do it. You did the, you did this three times. They're shooting one point three games. Like, why is the fourth one so hard? And why is it so much like, why is it controversial to say Austin Matthews hasn't looked good? Cause he had like 14 no. shot attempts last game and he's shooting 3.3%. But, but is he, he looking did, good? But he's not looking great. And how many is he of those looking shots dominant? Look dangerous? Are you afraid of Austin Matthews when you see him out there? No, no. I'm seeing a lot of well, the pucks being cycled, and you know, I'm seeing a lot. I'm not seeing Austin Matthews scaring people. William Nylander looks like he scares people. I'm not seeing that, and I don't. You know, I I understand the advanced stats. I understand that. I get it. I get it. At what fucking point do people understand that the result is the only thing that matters? Yeah. Here's, That's here's why it's thing. controversial to say those things because there's a bunch of numbers that say the opposite thing. But if you just right. watch the damn, if you just watch the damn game, you see the evidence in front of your eyes that it's just not good. Maybe you guys are more dialed in than me. I'm not seeing anyone defending them. It's just a fan base that wants you to fucking win. Yeah. I mean, because really, at the end of the day, there's no logical argument. Yes, we understand the whole, well, they've, uh, they should have won. The numbers suggest <laughs> they should have. They didn't fucking win. All right. And we're talking about it already as though they're not going to win. No Muzzin, no Tavares. Who, who, Dermot and Sandine are coming off the two worst games I've, I've seen either of them play. And I tell you what. Gut check time. That, that quote. That quote. The Mitch Marner one? We That's didn't fun. start on time. Oh, yeah. We you, didn't you start on time. minutes. There was 50. You didn't start on time. Okay, we blew the first 20. I'm going to make a Mark Messier guarantee right now on the podcast. If they don't start on time in game seven this year, Mike Babcock is getting fired. <laughs> okay? I'm so sick of this excuse from his team. Oh! Oh, oh what? Second consecutive play. Maybe, maybe if we lit, like did a blood test, not starting on time and literally not being able to do this, string together four wins out of seven is part of their DNA. What are we about to find out? So I'll let you We're going to find out. We're going to find out whether Mitch Marner is a Leaf next year or not, I think. Literally, yeah, yes. Marner so, for Eichel starts Monday if they lose. Yeah. So I was, yeah. I was, I, I, so I'm going to be on um, 31 Thoughts as well, the podcast with American Friedman. Oh, cool. Because we never heard when, of it. When the Leafs have, a, oh, I love supporting smaller shows. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's good that we can loan our talents to them. Yeah. yeah I got guys on the up. Big yeah. heart. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really believe in those guys. But for the Montreal Canadiens, they're spending a wild amount of money this year. The Leafs built to win now, and heads will roll, mm-hmm. no matter who As wins should. or loses. Heads will roll, and I've said I said this before. Uh, Matthews Rocket, Marner top five in scoring, high top end scoring, good depth scoring this year, and role players who actually know how to play a role when they're not scoring. Defensive depth, defensive responsibility, uh, defensive buy in goaltending um hits people will actually punch you in the face this year what would you change i don't know no they had everything they needed to win this series and they're not doing it i think what i would change is my superstar scoring yeah that's what i would change i would see i want my stars to score what do we say? I know everybody's like well it's not the nba it's got to be a team game yeah but like let's be honest okay uh, oh. If if Marner and Matthews, if I told you before this series, it's going to go seven games, Marner and Matthews are going to have a goal going into game seven. You're going to be like, so it's not going well. Right. <laughs> so it's just I'd, I'd, like, is what you're I'd saying. I'd say it's a yeah. miracle. All right. The it's a miracle it reached that, that point. Yeah. yeah. You have the Rocket Richard winner. He needs to score. That's his role. Sportsnet stats. Uh, oh, 
<laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Sportsnet stats. The Leafs' big three have struggled in their attempts to close out a playoff series in their career. And I'm not going to yell at Sportsnet stats, but uh, I, I, I quibble with their use of big three. William Nylander, goals, one, points, three, minus two, eight shots on goal, shooting percentage, 12.5. Mitch Marner, goals, zero, points, one, plus, minus, minus five. Shots on goal, 13, shooting percentage, zero. Austin Matthews, one goal, that was his only point. Plus, minus, negative four, shots on goal, 30, (laughs) shooting percentage, 3.3. That's hysterical. Now, the big three... Nylander's got more than both those guys combined. Big three. I mean, he's a half a point a game player. That's a slight dip. Matthews and Marner have a point each through. And since Marner has zero goals, Matthews has one, and that's his only point. I'm going to assume that actually is only one goal. I'm going to assume it's Marner setting on Matthews, and it's actually one goal. I don't actually know that. I can also say, too, that if they win on Monday, everything's fine going to the Jets. It's literally Vegas versus Minnesota. We all yeah. look at Vegas and we're like, still strong yeah. team. No, who, well, who's, good questioning, on who's questioning Vegas going into the next round? You know, like they're going to put up a fight versus Colorado. And it's going to be very close. Like if the Leafs win tomorrow, they can make up for it. Well, Leafs and this is earned this. This is literally like um, it, it's like turn the nuclear weapon on or off. Yeah, it's 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 if you if you lose, you've turned it on. Right. If you if you win, we all forget about it. We move on. This is your chance. You better gut, show up. Gut check time. Gut yeah. check time. Do you have the guts? Like I have promise, the guts? like to any Leafs that I'm being far too mean to, I promise I'll leave you alone. You win this game. No. Like, <laughs> I don't think. Okay, but here's the thing. There's no character assassination going on here. This is a this is a team. <laughs> like, <laughs> win a little bit. And stars, please score a goal. And, and you know what? I, I also think the whole, remember there was that whole thing at the beginning of the season. Well, Mitch Marner's really worked on his shot in the off season. Don't think he did. And if he did, he didn't work hard enough. Mitch, time to develop no, a shot. It's, well, no, it's well, Mitch Marner. Mental. Mitch Marner was on a thirty goal pace this season. Yeah. he worked on his shot. He was a goal scorer. Then shoot That's one of them were on the power play. Then shoot in the play. Shoot it's on even the power worse play. that through six games you can't score a goal when you're a thirty goal scorer, and the ne- guy next to you was on pace for a hundred and eighty two goals in ten <laughs> games. Hi- Hyman like, that was awesome, Matthews. Hyman's legitimately the most dangerous player on that line, which is Seriously. embarrassing. It's embarrassing. it's embarrassing and like i love i love zach hyman but he's he's the most dangerous player on that line um they the habs adjusted they said we might want to cover this willie guy mm-hmm. um felino i mean bless him hurt. he's obviously hurt he yeah so he, he's not effective so why is he playing get rally nash in you, there you have people you have what people. Did, what did they switch to? Wasn't it Nylander? It was Nylander and Matthews Marner for six minutes last night, which and but, they were they dominated. They were dynamite. But then Rumble Hyman, Rumble. wasn't it Hyman Kerfoot, Spezza? Something no. like that, or no? Uh, Simmons, Kerfoot. was it not? Mm, I don't know. I don't. Or Mikheyev, Mikheyev. Mikheyev could have scored no, that a was couple times third? last night. By that the was way, the third line. I forgot. But Mikheyev doesn't score. <laughs> yeah, Mikheyev can't finish. He he oh, he, he had has the two best all the chances of overtime. Yep. Mm-hmm. All I the opportunities, finish. no finish. Yeah. Well, Hyman had two breakaways as well. Did he not? <laughs> he who? Sorry. Hyman had during the course of that game, he had two breakaways, just clear yeah. on Price, and he didn't finish. Did it's he? tough to do breakaways one on one with Price. I don't blame yeah. him for that. Yeah. Price, you have to. You have to. It's like you got to pass it around. That guy is fucking dynamite. There's just no other way around it. He's, but he's beatable. Beatable, he's beatable, but he's dialed. not even the best goalie in the series. Yeah, our goalie's better. And we're <laughs> like, going to game seven. Like <laughs> our goalie is out dueling Price. It's just torture. It's torture. And boys, do you mind if we have the conversation about how badly I need to do LFRs again? Oh no, you're not doing that. We're not having. We're not even gonna. Uh, why? Uh, why? Because you, because that's your fucking job, dude. Don't, you don't think don't I'm talented? Do you don't think I'm talented? I think you're extremely I just talented. Found out that you guys don't job. think I can do anything else. 
No, I, I think agree. that I think that's... not. You're a one trick pony. You better stick yeah. to it, else you'll fall off. So keep doing it. Yeah, but Nike. Oh, we Nike's had a few down years in shoe sales. Well, fuck, we better give up. <laughs> <laughs> imagine no like literally that is, that is the same that is literally <laughs> they, they the same said, okay now the other companies have a waffle iron machine what if we did something better than just a waffle iron machine and they innovated yeah but they this still do the, they still do the waffles i am about to invent jordans do you understand okay jordans i'm about to invent <laughs> them he can get it homeboy can get it i would love to get jordans i would love to get them all I'm saying is that's the dumbest thing you could say yeah, right now. Don't be stupid. There is, super there is no take super cool. in that, okay? You were not inhabiting this body last night. You you did not have to make Good. that LFR. I don't <laughs> like feeling like that. I don't. Yeah, the wording could have been better. Yeah, I do not be like. Worried. Listen, you didn't invite me inside. I would have. Yeah. You know? I'd be worried if Adam was inside. Hey, hey, hey. Listen, hey, bro. things can change as we know. Uh, well, <laughs> no, stay at home order, Adam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's right. the worst and, part of this. And by the way, don't let any fully vaccinated people who did healthcare oh. front lines for game seven. Don't do that. By the way, if you've missed this, the Ontario government is not letting fully vaccinated people into the arena. The Leafs were going to give it all, all the tickets to healthcare workers. And there was going to be like, I think 2,500, just like in Montreal. And the Ford government said, fucking no. And it's, it's, so here's the question. Why are we getting vaccinated? <laughs> like no, if a it fully doesn't, vaccinated no. person can't, no, no, no. Listen, I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I'm vaccinated. But if a fully vaccinated person can't go to a masked event, a hockey game, socially distanced, what the fuck are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? What's the reason? You want to get the people who are on the fence about the vaccine, you want to carrot and stick a little bit? You want to give them like that little carrot to dangle in front of them? Hey, look at what's going to happen. And look, yeah. at, we're doing a good thing. Here's a win that literally everybody would have agreed with. Everybody. Every frontline worker, every teacher, everybody who hates the Ford government, man, does that make them look really good? And they're like, you know what? Fuck that. These fully vaccinated people, they might kill someone. What the fuck is going on in here? I hate this province so much right now. I swear to God. Just run by fucking tools. Sorry. Can, can, can we talk oh. about how this is Adam and not me? This oh, is shocking. I'm so mad. I'm so yeah, mad. I, shocking. I'm that shocked made me more mad than the least. Let the fully mouth. vaccinated person who's worked their ass off for 15 months into yeah. the arena. Are you out of your mind? Yeah. This is a political win. And these guys are like, no, it didn't fit the plan. You guys. Change the plan. Knuckle dragging losers. All of them. <laughs> All of them. They don't. They're filled with rocks. Their head. Filled with fucking rocks. There is not a single argument that is reasonable that you can give me. And, and here's the other thing. They're like, you know what? The science table, the what we call it the science table in Ontario. They're like, you know what, guys? We're ready to open up schools again. They just announced that this weekend. So we can't let fully vaccinated people into an arena socially distanced with masks on. But we can open the schools. Mm. And some teachers may not be fully vaccinated yet. But that's cool. Figure that one out. The carrot where, and stick idea is head? great. Because like, if you wanted to get people who are on the fence, why not take the most popular thing Sorry. in Ontario, in, in, the, in the entire country, the most popular thing here is... The hockey. sport! Our this sport. sport! And you take the number one team. You say, hey, you get to go watch this team if you're Four fully three. vaccinated. Like, it would have been a great idea. I've never seen a politician in this country so unanimously hated... Oh, it's and you know what he did it to himself. He oh. looked good coming out of the first wave. It was like, well, he, he handled things well enough. And this guy just cannot, cannot pull his head out of his ass. It's unbelievable, unbelievable. It's and I, I tell you, like no matter you know how you vote, whatever, wh no matter where you're from, he's not going winning. No, not no, winning. no, no. It's not about that. No matter where you're from, listening to this podcast right now, your vote going forward has to include what if this happens again mm -hmm. yeah have you ever voted going what if there's a pandemic <laughs> i never not once in my life have i thought that never never i've never voted for a candidate like i want this person to lead me into the apocalypse and now i'm like uh yeah they might actually need to know what they're doing so uh marner for eichel when <laughs> we're gonna on wednesday is gonna be a fun conversation Yo, because no matter I think what that's the direction you go 
That's our that's our fucking that's the name of the episode on Wednesday, no matter what, whether they win or lose. Monica, <laughs> no, if they yes. win, if they win, we gotta do something. No, more positive fuck it. That. Why put the dump on the guy? And, and by the way, screw you if you're fully vaccinated because you can't do anything you're not allowed anyway. <laughs> okay. Just all right, just Adam. Imbeciles. <laughs> all right. Imbeciles. Adam, if this Sorry. was Steve, you would have talked him down. I'm running better. for office. I'm fucking it's tired. It's true. Of this shit. It's true. I guess Adam. I'm not as good at talking him down. Yeah, Adam, you I, would I cut off Steve by right now. <laughs> Sorry. So we gotta. Well, Adam's mad sorry. because because he had to throw away his garbage and he had a hard time because apparently you can't throw out your garbage. Yeah, <laughs> I can't even throw it. They can't even open the fucking dump. You can go <laughs> golf because he was golfing with people today, but I can't go to the dump and drop off a fucking cardboard box. I know my swing is is, my swing was not working today. Oh, Tiger what Sunday. This place. What? Why? We've made fun of Florida for so long. Why? Why do we get to make fun of Florida? Uh, because yeah, by the way, never gave a shit, and you don't get a medal for never having given a shit. But that's true. Anyway, okay, fair sorry. enough. No, I'm just saying sorry. we're no better. We're no better. Yeah. We're, we tried. We tried. Different. I, we're different. Fucked up. We're yeah, different I guess up. that's what I'm saying. Though this you is can what Game Seven kinds. brings out of us. You can be different kinds this of. What, this is what happened to go to Game Seven brings out of us. Okay, sorry. We didn't have this problem last show. So this here's fine. The, here's go. the question. The real question here is: What do the Leafs have to do to win with a diminished roster? You lose Muzzin. You lose Tavares. What do you do to win? What do you have to do? What, what's the key to the game? Not get completely overwhelmed by the simplest game plan of all time, which is what the Montreal Canadiens did really effectively in the first period of game five and basically for the first two periods in game six. It's literally dump, chase, um, and force their defensemen to think. Mm-hmm. And it ruined Rasmus Sandin in game five. I, I I genuinely I I don't know what to tell you about the play Travis Dermott made in overtime. I well, guess. it was the, or the credit to play. Paul Byron. Credit to Paul Byron for coming up and pressuring the D. I mean, I guess like, that's that's. But he should know what to do with that. Jesse, right. he's doing a spinorama in his own zone. <laughs> right. Like, what but the fuck? The on, the, on the play before that, Dermott sends it up the same boards off the boards to the Canadians. They get the puck back. They come back. They dump it back down. Goes back around to Dermott again. Paul Byron comes up this time. He meets him at the blue line. And then Dermot tries to spin back, which you know is what? something I'm sure he's done a million times. So I understand the situation. Just if you're trying in overtime oh, of game man. six, you got to complete the spin. You know what you don't do? Like, the, here's the thing about that play, Jesse, that you, you make mm-hmm. note of. He fired it up the boards the first time, gave it away to the Canadians. Fine. You know what the right. Canadians didn't do that time? Score a fucking goal in overtime. <laughs> it's you know what they did the second time? Right. They scored a fucking goal in overtime. Right. And like... But- his idea there is okay. I'm not going to do the same up the left side of the boards again. I'm going to come yeah. back and I'll do worse. I can do so worse. Oh, we're doing up. spinning shit now. <laughs> like, uh, uh, and again, th- this is the margin of error. Mm-hmm. Game five, Alex Galchenyuk arcs oh. that pass 45 degrees, and it's a scoring chance. Willie taps it in. He's a hero f- forever. Um, there's a big bronze version of him on Bremner forever for the rest of, rest of our lives. You know what? If, if you know what, like they, what, what were the final shots in overtime? Oh, it was like 38, 28 or something like that. It like, was the Leafs like, in the Leafs' favor. Like just the overtime period off the top oh. of my head, I think it was like 12 to three. Like they utterly dominated them. And sorry, that's, that's just the defense. We're forgetting here. Well, no, we're not forgetting. It's, no, I was trying to give the team credit. Jack Campbell saved their ass in the early part of game six. And the Leafs had to overcompensate so much on defense that they're useless offensively. Useless. And as Thomas Drance said in his wonderful tweet, um, they're at their best when they're when they're down. The Leafs? And, and yeah, and because it forces them to do what they're good at, which is play offense. You can't win. You can't win. You can't win like that. <laughs> you, you just can't. I'm trying to find the uh, exact tweet. I'm trying this to find good tweet. It. This is a fucking great tweet. No, sorry. So to answer your question about the shots. <laughs> oh, fuck you. It was 15 to 8 for the Leafs in the third. And it was 13 to 2 in overtime. For the Leafs, yeah. For the Leafs. And <laughs> one of those went in for the game. <laughs> 
Like, please set me on fire. Like, okay. <laughs> Thomas Drance, the Leafs team, this Leafs team. I want to clip that. <laughs> is, this Leafs team is such a contradiction, imperious and deep, but lacking killer instinct. A top-heavy team with an invisible top end. A classic front runner, but paradoxically at their best when trailing. That is goddamn Shakespeare. <laughs> and so agonizingly true. Agonizingly true. And like, listen, I'm not going to feel silly if the Leafs win game seven, eight to nothing, and go to the second round and everything's fine. I'm not going to feel silly because how are you actually putting us through this right now? <laughs> I know what I'm watching. I know what I'm watching. Just because something happens in the future doesn't mean what you thought in the current moment wasn't untrue. You know, yeah. just because they change it, they go out and they win doesn't mean everything we said isn't true. That's that's, you, you know, you know, my memory, whenever, whenever people pull out the receipts for the conversation and for quotes, I'm like, you are not citing the the context of the day yep you're not citing i mean it won't be any leafs fans calling out leaf fans i, I surely not no one I like i i said on this on uh on the lfr yesterday like the ratings might honest to god go down from <laughs> game no. game six to seven no. what leaf fan is watching this game every single one shut up like that's not that's not no, a like this like this <laughs> like the the stream numbers i mean th and this is part of the thing with the lfr like 130,000 views last time i checked 275,000 people checked out the stream we had as many as 41,000 concurrent and i like to think they were just tuning in to watch the leaf game and not for old stunt boy to go full david Ayers game and lose my mind i don't i don't want i don't want that to be my lot in life to be the guy who gets angry. Why can't I be happy boy who you turn to for celebratory things? <laughs> name can one, I be happy boy? Name, name one celebratory moment since you started the channel. The fucking Raptors winning the championship. That was celebratory. Did you uh, cover that on, like, on your channel? I did. No, okay. you got to talk Leafs. We're talking yeah. Leafs. It's not Austin Raptors Matthews, John Tavares. Austin Matthews, first overall pick. John Tavares okay. signing. There you go. Neither of those things happen on the ice. Bad start. Okay, that's no, fair. but you made a video and people tuned in for that. So you okay. can be so oh, sorry. happy. They, they think won a lottery. Tavares, yeah. They they got lucky by winning a lottery that they put themselves in a position to succeed by finishing last. <laughs> they saw that and said, "Finally, something I I'm good at." And they finished last. They lost as much as possible, and they weren't even that good at it. They were a, a good last place team lucked into the lottery there. And oh, let's not forget their other heroic feat, giving someone a ton of money. Oh, the to come home is, anyway. Yeah. The, the, the series is different if Muzzin's in it. The series is different if Tavares is in it. This happens every year. Every year. And also, I, I haven't even seen the Tavares excuse been used. Because they erased it by winning three straight after he got hurt. There is no excuse. No. And frankly, they were better in that game. They could have won that game. Montreal literally two to one. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Not even wrong. Now, I just want to say going into the playoffs, I hate to be the guy who says this, but I was nervous. This is what I was nervous for. This is what I was nervous for. What their problem is, is not like, guys, we can talk stats all day. Uh, there's a problem between the ears here. And I, if, if they win tomorrow, I will still be nervous for their Winnipeg series, no matter how much they should win it. Yeah, it will bring totally. me back. I'm at negative like 100 right now. Winning tomorrow will bring me back to zero. I'm not going to be happy. I'm going to be happy that they got through. That'll be great. But my confidence in this team will remain zero. This, right now it's negative 100. This is how I felt when Boston tied it up in 2013. The the tying goal from Bergeron was so much more devastating to me than the game winner. Because I knew the game winner was coming. Before the tying goal happened, there was hope. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting the same vibes. And I hope I'm wrong. I just hope I'm wrong.
<sighs> it's dark. It's very dark. What do you want? Hey, Engvall else? got an assist on the second goal. Like, what do you want? <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> like, uh, Jack Campbell's been great. He's yes. been this the season. Fantastic! The Leafs discovered that they have a number one goalie. That's yep. pretty cool. Who makes like one and a half million bucks? Yeah, that's pretty great. And, and he can show, and he shows up in the playoffs. That's awesome. The other, the other positivity. Thing, like, how many of the series that the Leafs have played since uh, 2017 do they lose if they get this specific performance from Jack Campbell? Yes, none. Zero. They probably they probably beat if, Columbus if Campbell is this guy. I think they beat Washington beat if they have Jack Campbell playing like this. I think eh. they beat Washington. I think, oh, Freddie, boy. Freddie did such a good job for a few years of stealing at least one game. <laughs> but, you know, Boston, the, the, no question, they won both series. They win both series. Oh, Reimer was pretty good. Are we counting that one? No, well, we're not no, going that's back too far. Oh, it's too far. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, no, that's. Yeah. Jack that's, Campbell was, like, <laughs> drafted that year. Yeah. That's, um, that's that's speaking of which, ass. honestly, when you go go into next season, fuck, doesn't it make a whole lot of sense to have Reimer and Jack Campbell just the fucking like uh, just Mickey no. Mouse and uh, Mickey Mouse too on the like in terms of like how sweet and lovely they are? I'd like. I it. think they're the happiest goaltending tandem in the world. I haven't looked at the goal goalie free agency, but I think there's somebody better than Reimer. Oh, there's oh, hey, plenty. Oh, oh. Plenty. <laughs> Answer is oh. plenty, but m- how much are cheaper <laughs> for yeah. pretty good numbers? He's, he's not going to be 3.4 this time around. No. If he's two, I'd be surprised. So, hey, you know, it's, you it's, not a, it's not a swipe at him. He's on the end, dot backside of his career. You want Max Chaos? Tristan Jari. <laughs> Buy low. Yeah. It's not a bad idea. Not, like, not bad. Don't hate it at all. Not a bad idea. I would like to talk to somebody who knows something about goaltending first to see what happened. Yeah. Like Tristan Jari like well, gave a game know, away so. because he misplayed a puck, right? Like it, yeah. you can't, but then he lost his confidence. Yeah, he did. Oh. He, he, okay, nope. he makes 3.5 for the next two years after this one. Nah. But we're thinking. Um, so th- I, I guess the thing is, you know, uh, I think we can sort of wrap it here. Like, do we need to say anything else? Uh, yes, we do. Adam, your thoughts on Doug Ford? Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just, it's like, it's like, it's so funny oh, because we, we know how you feel. No, I know, but it's just sort of like you, you look at and he, it's like, here's a, here's a dumb idea. Okay, let's do it. Here's a dumb idea. Okay, let's do it. Here's a really great idea. Fuck that. I don't trust my own judgment. There is a guy who's flipping the puck out of the zone at center ice with nobody around him. That's a Doug Ford just pulled a Mitch Marner. That was uh that's just a, that is a slam dunk and he missed it. Fuck. What a, and what a whiff too. Oh, that's, that's worse than Carlton Fisk in the 1970s losing the damn playoffs on a ground ball. Like that is brutal. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look up the play. It's it's terrible. It's one of the worst plays in baseball history. Um. I anyway, like I don't like him. Get here. Can I? Can I take a stance? Okay. I don't. I don't, I don't like. Let's him. not. <laughs> Half of this podcast shouldn't be Ontario politics. I'm right. mad. No, Lord. I'm mad that the Let's healthcare go. workers won't get to be there. It's not really about the politics. It's, it's about. A, using I think your it's hundred percent. It's literally a political issue. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, it is a political. It's optics. They're worried about optics. They're not yeah. worried about using their fucking brains, which is what we elected them for. Anyway, so listen, the Leafs, they win. I don't feel shitty about this podcast. I believe every word that everybody on this podcast said today. Um, we'll see you Wednesday. We'll see how this goes. I'm, I, I don't know if this is dark or if this is just angry. Are we allowed to be angry? Yes. Both. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's angry. So we'll no. see you Wednesday. I hope okay. we're celebrating tomorrow night. I really believe no right now is like, I don't understand what all the fuss is. <laughs> you know, you know, so uh, they, they think it's warranted. They understand the situation they're in. Mm-hmm. And I like what Nick Felino said, like, just lay it all on the line. Yeah. This team is incredibly disappointing and their fans are incredibly, including us, are incredibly disappointed in them. And if they don't show up, the team needs new players to play next year in the playoffs, hopefully, mm-hmm. if they even make it. Who knows? Enjoy the first, Columbus. I love you guys. I wish I could give you a hug. S-D-P.
the Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.